<laughs> People, this is Broken Puppet, and this is how to draw a Namakubi or a severed head. Enjoy. Alright people, how to draw a Japanese severed head or otherwise known as a Namakubi. I hope I pronounced that right, Namakubi. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. I've been calling that for years. I'm not too sure that's how it's pronounced, but yeah, anyway. So, start off with an oval. I'm going to put this one slightly at an angle. Down it dead straight. So, like so. Line across. Line down. Start with the nose, just coming a little bit further than this original line we've done here. Just coming down, following it almost the same sort of shape as that line. Once we get to about here, I'm going to curve back. A little loop and curve back like so. Put a little nice little bit just on the hint, just on the side there. Just a little tiny little curve out just there. Curve like that. Now where this line comes across at an angle, I'm going to bring in a curve like that. I'm going to curve the other way. And then we're going to bring a curve cutting through that edge just there. Like so. Now the top of that you're going to get a little hint of a line just there where you would have this original overlap of the eye because you've only got an like, angry eye over the top you're not going to see that bring a curve just underneath the bottom of it so same sort of shape as the bottom just going a bit further down a bit longer and connects up to where it would sort of start like so then the other eye, now if you sort of bring up from the nostril like sort of line that's roughly where you want to start the eye so we start around here I'm going to bring in this base shape to begin with, so we're going to curve it. Curve the other way. Quite long, longer than you know this one. Curve underneath. Just here we're going to have a little curve. I'm just going to curve across. Another one over that. And then again, this line under here that would originally curve this way, will just sit underneath this bit. Just there. In the corner, little dark line. On the back, it's a little dark line. I sort the pupils down a bit. I'm going to have a bit of sort of cross because he's, he's a severed head, he's dead, you know. It's, kind of gives it the right kind of look. Come from the side, it's a little bit. Bring that line in. Curve okay, that up. Bring another line coming down here. Go ahead and in like a sort of line with this sort of curve here, but just stop it a little bit early. Curve okay, it across, go okay, around. So that's where one of the eyebrows is going to go. Pull that curve back there. Now just bouncing a bit off of this, just curve that down. Don't worry too much about that in a minute. Now let's go into the mouth. Now where you got this line across, this is where you're going to sort of make your bend. So come up like a V, then bend. You want to come further out this way than this way. So a little bit this side, a bit longer this side. Now he's going to have some rope coming out of his mouth, I think. Where the head's kind of sort of been strapped up. The rope isn't always a part of a number can be, you know. Number can be here, yeah. you know, but it does look good. You see it sometimes. Just little two lines come down from the nostril bits, just there, that curve. Two lines across for the rope. On the corner of these mouth bits, just it. Bring the curve just around the edge, like so. Almost like he's little biting on it. Bring that there. Bring that chin around. So it's going to curve that down and around there. So we'll come off this side, we're not going to see too much of this because we're going to have the sword come through his cheek at this sort of angle. So just bring in your lines across, very lightly across the picture so you can kind of match up with how it goes on the outside. So really long kind of rectangular shape, keeping it fairly straight and just curve the edge in like so. Put a little box there, might as well make the handle. Now have another bit of rope just coming across here and one just coming up there. So just bringing two parallel lines across, two parallel lines across like so. Now it's going to have this little bandana thing on his head. So I'm going to bring a line across, bring this down. Come up quite well because I need enough room to kind of fit his hair. His hair is going to be this little curve just here. Then I'm going to bring a line out. Curve back sharply 
and curve back again. Curve up, curve in, down. You just want to make some cool lines with like really sort of sharp fish bends. And try not to do too many of the same ones, you know, you want it to be fairly different each time you do a line. And have my overcross and underlap. In the centre here, it's going to bring a line up. So just create a little, it's a little box here, just keep bringing your line so you make a little sort of box curve that will go over the span down a bit. So you see curve up there, curve up, and it's sort of just curve around the top. So it's almost circular, we've done it with straight lines. And then just a few little lines in between that. And similar to this side, just shaping off this edge, just curve around there. Now his head will come around there. So you would get a hint of his head just here, so I want to, I want to see that bald head of his. Just a hint of it just there. And then I'm going to just curve here where his hair's kind of been tied back behind and just kind of being folded over his head. Underneath his neck, I'm going to have some rope just there and that. A bit of flesh just where his neck's going to be with some blood on. Now it's just a drawing, but I'll let you know when I'm going to draw the blood if any of you are a bit squeamish. So just reinforcing those lines a little bit. So yeah, his hair's going to come across here, so some straight lines. And you'll get some hair flicking across the face, you know, kind of blowing in the wind, so it's going to all kind of go in that general direction. So what I'm going to do now. Just bring in some of the bold lines, and then I'm going to come back and do the uh, refined detail lines. And the bold lines are mainly going to be pretty much on the outside edge, and a few select lines on the inside. Just going to do these with my trusty Sharpie pen. So the bandana is going to be one of the key ones I want to do. You definitely want to make sure this bandana has got thick bold lines, you know. They always did. When it comes out the clothing bits like this, it was always like really thick lines. You kind of like to different, you know, differentiate. Yeah. You guys know why I'm tongue-tied this morning, so I'm absolutely knackered. It's been a long week. But yeah, to make it sort of different and stand out, you know, the clothing bit was always really dark lined. Often sort of brush strokes that was quite uneven, so you wouldn't have like, it'd be kind of like this, so you'd have wide edges, shorter edges. And it wasn't always the same. Like so. Now, I know I go pretty quick with this, so take your time. Don't feel like you have to go same speed as me. This one maybe across there. Maybe just a hint at the rope kind of breaking off here, so Have that kind of come there. Maybe just a little bit on the other side as well. Or underneath. Is that you? Oh, I've got an itchy foot. God damn it. Right, 
no rabbits. And now come in with my fine liner. Yeah, I think that's 0 0.8 rather actually. It's just a uni pin, 0 0.8. You can do the entire thing in the same line width, you know, a lot of traditional Japanese stuff was. But I am just a sucker for different line weights, you know, line thicknesses. I think it really makes an image when you have different line weights. That's just me. You know, if you guys like the same sort of like line width way there's nothing wrong with that. I just got to remember why this is my tutorial, it's your drawings. So, if you've got something you've heard there rather than the way I do it, feel free to, you know. Don't sort of like feel like you have to stick to the rules of the way I tell it, you know. Make changes. I'd like to see how you guys interpret my tutorials. So just bringing the angle lines across, just twisting with the shape of the rope. Should have done a second bit of rope underneath with the other pen. I'll do that in a sec. So it's going to bring in the lines from this hair now. So just bring these lines all symmetric. Kevin. Inwards, then just on the inside, just have some random flicks of hair on the outside, too. There's a little bit here, there, and everywhere. I'm just going to quickly just put a second line in. Second bit of rope. Just a really uneven, squiggish kind of line, you know. A bit of kind of crazy flesh where it's been chopped off. I don't want it neat. Come down the center curve and off the edge there. So the side bit here, it's going to bring in lines across. And then some going just diagonally down, just on this side. Just like so. And just cut enough there. Okay, rub up. Rub out that pencil work. I'm just going to use my Windsor, uh, Windsor Newton brush markers. You guys feel free to use whatever you want. You know, it's all the same thing in the end, you know, it's just apply what you see me doing just with the tools you use. You know, anything is good to draw with. No, but if you want these, they're not expensive, you know, they're quite inexpensive, they're pretty cool. So we're just trying to find me a black. Don't pay for you over there. There we go. So it's going to start off with a black, colouring some bits bold. So I'm going to strip a hair just there, strip it like just here, and I blend this out so you get like a cool sort of hair shine down the centre. A little bit just there, similar on this top bit, 
Just gonna leave a gap. Gonna make a nice shine. Just like so. A little black bit just in there and there. And just anywhere it kind of fits in a corner, just a little bit. You don't do go too crazy with this. Underneath the eye, just in that corner, just underneath the nose, just create a little shadow. Then I'm going to come in with a grey, just go over that black edge with the grey. Side to side motion is always really good for blending out. Make great just underneath these eyes. It's going to flick someone to this bandana. A little bit into his head on the side, just there. Look it in. I'm just going to put a little bit just down the center of these ropes. Trying to avoid the edges. Just like a little shadow just down the center of them. Take your time. I'm being a bit quick and a bit messy with it. Get a jet of sword. Then I'm just gonna grab my grey. Grab this one so this is cool enough. Then just go over those harsh edges, just so you want to blend them out smooth like the hair bits. Put the sword. I remember on this kind of paper, you know, sort of scrap paper kind of thing, it will come out darker to begin with and then go lighter. So obviously it wets the paper. So give it a little bit to see the true colour come through before you go crazy with it. Just looking at this light grey, just in a few areas just to create a bit of shape. Just on this bit. Now I'm just going to add in some colour. I'm going to get some brown on those ropes. Can have some brown on the ropes here. I'm going to put a bit of blue in the face. Not go too crazy with it. In like red for the blood and maybe a bit of cloudy bits in the background. I'm going to throw a bit of green or sink in the sword, just to kind of give it a bit more colour. And I think in yellow for the eyes. So I'm just going to put in that yellow to begin with.
just going to use my old blender trick. So you've probably seen me do this a million times before, but if you haven't, yeah, that's my blender. Put the markers, like pro marker or something, with a fine tip. Get that. Hold it to the blender edge, the wide tip. Just hold it until the tip of the marker goes see-through, like sort of like a white colour. Test on the paper, see if it comes out clear. If it does, just start going side to side, going back towards where you want the colour. And eventually that colour will start coming through, and when it does, just keep working it back to your edge. And once it dries, that bit will go see through and just get like a blue fade with this. It's a handy little trick when you want to blend markers, you know. So again, just side to side, just each time just overlapping that edge. Very important that you overlap it a touch, otherwise you end up getting this dodgy edge sometimes where it's a bit not clean. One, two. Blending this around it. When you get like here and you come side, you just want to blend in the center. Do this, get halfway, like so. Blend it again, then come back from the other way, and you get a fade just in the center. Just come up towards that chin. Wrong tip. Now I'm just going to have a bit of purple come back from the lips just to connect up to it. Now this purple comes out quite grayish on this. So I'm just going to start this going over the top. Working my back. Okay, so I'm just working back. So let's get my green. Gonna come in with quite a strong green to begin with. Just gonna colour in like a little box section, just each corner bit, just here. So, come in my light green, just off the top edge of it. And orange. A side bit, and yellow. I think on this bit. Just like so, and then for the hat, I did have my lid bit around there, what about the lid? There we go. Hats. Yeah, I'm gonna go for a really faint brown colour and I'm going to put a splash of colour just over the top in a pan I think. Just put 
that there. Come back with green, maybe. Four dots, just in a box. Just repeat the pattern, just come across. Working out across. Maybe it's a little red dot just on the inside of each one. So pre-warning people, I'm going to start adding the blood now. So this is where it's going to get a bit gory. Start with just little red lines around there. I'm going to bring just a splash of red just on the edge of the blade here. So just squiggly line. I'm just going to do some flicks off of it. Some little dots. Make it a bit random, you don't want it all smooth. A little bit of red coming out the nose, a little nosebleed maybe. Come up to the eye, just a little droopy bit. Turn down the chin. Looks on the side just there. And then a nice big chunk of this just pull on here, just Squiggly, occasionally like a little gappy bit missing. Some little flicks just coming up on the rope. A little bit just on the edge of the blade. Just like so. Then I'm just going to grab my grey just here. Just to finish it off, just going to have some cloudy bits in the background. Just keep going like a semicircle pattern. Just filling in some gappy bits. Very fair, I want it just to kind of disappear into the background almost. So it's branch and just seal in all those colour bits so it just feels like a set design kind of pierced in place. Does that make sense? There we go. And also just a little bit of red just on this side. And there you have it. There's how to draw a severed head or a namakubi. Namakumbi. Nam a kubi. Yes, yeah, it. <laughs> hope you like it. Hope you enjoyed it. Comment, subscribe, like, yada yada yada. You guys know the usual routine. I'm the broken puppet. And I'll see you next time. Peace.